In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about the new React 18 hooks, specifically use deferred value and use transition. Now we'll start from the basics of use deferred value. It has a very complicated name, but it's actually really simple and useful to use. And then we're going to go a little bit more in depth on use transition to understand what the parameters, what to expect, like everything you need to know about kind of like what it does and doesn't do and when it won't do it. So that's it. Let's go. Hey, welcome back. This is the last week of our React Holiday series, so I'm super excited that you're here. I'm glad that you made it all the way through. Uh, without further ado, let's just dive in, get into the code, and uh, learn some stuff. Let's go. So here we have um, a new demo. This is the first time that you've seen this demo if you've been following along. And I want to ex explain it to you and talk about the details of it first. So first and foremost, we're keeping one piece of state, and that is just the search term okay uh we have uh, you know a label wrapping an input and then some some nonsense some chaos happening down here so let's cover the input the input is a controlled component we know that because on change it's updating this state it doesn't use the browser to control the state of the input it actually sets the value based on the state that react is tracking so this is a controlled input um you can read more about that on the, the React docs. They have some more information about that. We're not going to talk about that too much, except for the fact that you need to know that these controlled inputs have a tendency to be beholden to React's rendering. So if React is rendering slowly, well, then this input is going to render slowly. Um, and I want to demonstrate that to you by introducing what I said, this level of chaos that we have here. So right here, I'm generating 35,000 items, um, P tags, which have the search term that we have on state inside of it. Now, what this is going to do is going to put a bunch of these on the page and it's going to make rendering really slow. This is a lot of, a lot of Dom nodes to insert and take away from the page. So let's go in here and try it out. I'm going to type as fast as I can typing as fast as I can. Okay. That took forever it took an eternity actually it was so slow that i think i'm going to slow this down to just like twenty thousand items and see what happens uh this should this is a little less slow okay now what you'll notice is that even though i'm typing it's just kind of getting it's stalling right like so it's just just stopping which is a really irritating experience from an input input perspective and i'm sure you've experienced this before on inputs that are connected to something and just take forever to update. It's just really laggy. Each key press, you don't know if it's going to update or not. So really frustrating to type with. That's the problem that, that use deferred value is trying to solve. So how do we use deferred, use, use deferred value? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We can say let deferred search term. Okay, so I'm just going to put a deferred in front of uh, this value we have here equal react dot use deferred value search term if I can spell it right okay so we're creating a deferred value using react use deferred value from the value that we're keeping on state okay tracking so far now what we can do is that gives us a low priority update that we can put in places like this. So this we want to keep as it is high priority update. This is going to update as soon as the state changes. And then this is going to lag behind a little bit because we're not super concerned about whether or not this shows up immediately as long as it updates eventually. So let's change this to deferred search term. Again, leaving the input the same and see what that does for us. I didn't spell any of that right, but you get the sense. Let me even tune this up a little bit. So with this uh, 30,000, uh, hello there. Okay, so the cool thing is, is that the input remains snappy. So as soon as I type or delete some text, it deletes from the input, but everything below that, all those 30,000 elements that we have here, we have so many of them, all of those will update as React has resources, low priority resources to update them. This is super cool. And this is a contrived example, but you might already be able to imagine places where having this separation could be incredibly valuable. 
Now, I want to show you one trick that we can do to actually indicate that something's happening. So if we want, we can set a new variable called is stale. And so we to do this, we just um, compare the deferred search term and make sure that it is not the same as search term. So when these values are different, it means that we're showing stale data somewhere, anywhere that we're using this deferred search. So let's uh, add a div around all this and um, do our little styling game here where we change the opacity when is stale. We'll do it to something really low like 0 0.2 and then when it's normal we'll just leave the opacity normal. Okay, let's see what we did there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you see that as things are coming in, as those changes are kind of waiting to be set in the DOM, uh, we see a little bit of that uh, slighter gray color. Let me um, tune this up even more so we can see a little bit more delay. Um, hello there. Okay, so as I remove and put words in, you can see that it, it, it dims. And then as the new state becomes available on all of those nodes, it goes back to its regular opacity. Super cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. So that's it. That's just use deferred value. Um, this is not, as a React 18 RC, this is not finalized. So there may be some changes. Um, there may be some options that you can pass in here for, for, for various things. But this is the simplest thing that you can do with this and kind of a good representation of what it will be used for. Okay, so we covered use deferred value. I want to jump back to some of the examples that we covered in previous weeks with regards to transitions. Uh, specifically, I want to show you some of the areas where you might get a little bit stuck and make sure that you understand what's happening so you don't stay stuck for long. Now, first things first, you need to remember that, that these transitions are based on use state or use reducer, some type of React controlled state hook. So as soon as we don't have a state transformation, this transition doesn't do much for us. So let me do this. Let's take set Pokemon resource out of this. That's where we're um, setting state right here. So that's dimmed out because we're not using it anymore and uh, hit save. Now, what this will do is we'll still enact the fetch request and then wrap that in suspense. So doing all the things that we did before, but because we're not tracking state, this transition doesn't actually do anything. So we'll hit that. It doesn't do anything, but we don't see that kind of like dimmed out state either while the, uh, the fetch is happening. Now, you might think that this is unimportant to know because, you know, you, you're always going to be doing this like with state, setting these transitions based on state. However, I just want you to know that it's tied to the state change, not this fetch request specifically. So that's something to keep in mind as you, um, you know, as you work with these. So we'll put that back um, because we want this to work. So get back to the state that we have before. We see that nice kind of pending state when we uh, do this state transition, which is good. So let's talk about where we can separate these functions because in all honesty, like you don't want to have to run four functions every time you want to get this really nice UI. That's kind of a code liability to have all of this be strung together every time you make any type of button. Um, so we have our fetch request. We have our suspenseify, which wraps that fetch request. We have a resource that we're uh, setting via a state update. And then we're wrapping it all in start transition, which tracks if that transition is pending or not. So where can we break this up into additional pieces? Well, I have in comments two places that I think are a natural place to separate these. Um, first is the things that we have to or must include inside of the render function. And that's going to be start transition because it's a hook inside of our component. And then our set Pokemon resource, which is also a hook inside of our component. So that's where I would start is just kind of deciding what has to be inside of this component. So we can do that. Uh, let 
um, set Pokemon. I'm going to call this set Pokemon. Um, I don't know. I, I, I like the, the terseness of it. Um, I think it'll make sense as we're, you know, let's say if we added a back button or whatnot, we could do set Pokemon. And that's going to wrap up all of our hooks. So that will take a um, resource. And uh, it's going to do just this first part. So I think I can actually copy and paste this right there. So start transition, another function on the inside. It's going to take this resource here and then we can close that up. And I think, yeah, I think we got everything right. Okay, so we have set Pokemon. Now we can delete all of this. We have set Pokemon. Move that extra paren. And we're good. Uh, we just aliases or composes these two functions together. Okay, cool. Good so far. Okay, that's great because now we have a convenience function that, that connects these two hooks together, the transition and the state update. Um, now, looking at this, this part of it actually can be pulled out and composed outside of a component because we're not using any hooks. So uh, let's copy that out and we'll call this get Pokemon. And I like get because it kind of matches the uh, crud operation concept. So we're getting a Pokemon. Um, and then this is the implementation detail. We're using fetch specifically, but we're going to wrap. It's wrapped in this whole like suspensified nonsense to connect it up to the error and suspense boundaries. So we have that. Um, we need to change this a little bit to be a function. It's going to take an ID and then use that ID. So we'll make that more generic. And here we can replace all of this with get Pokemon of one. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can put this inside of a utility library or utility module if you wanted to. So you have all of your API functions and then you have kind of the wrapped versions of those that connect with suspense and error boundaries. Now, let's see how we did. We reduced this to set Pokemon and get Pokemon. Uh, does it work? It does. It works exactly the same as we did. So in recap, we can set up some of these utility functions fairly easily to make sure that we don't have to string along all of those functions every time that we use them. Now, I really like the terseness so far of what we have, which is just to get a Pokemon, which composes these two functions, uh, Suspensify and the fetch request, and then set Pokemon, which handles all of the hooks for transition and state setting. That might not be terse enough for you. You might want to just have one thing and that's totally fine. You can take it a little bit further as far as your heart decides. Now, there's one last thing that we covered this week in React.Holiday and I want to make sure that you understand that as well. And that is about these boundaries. So every time I teach React to spend stuff to people, there's this natural inclination to collapse these boundaries into the components that are rendering the content. And I want to tell you right now, that is a, a a good instinct, but a bad practice. Let me show you exactly what is going to happen. So we're going to copy this. Uh, we're going to put it inside of our component to say, hey, look, I always want these things to render together. I don't want to have to repeat myself. Um, so let's take those out and put them inside the component. Okay. Now, just doing that, we now get this error again which is kind of familiar, but curious because it says Pokemon detail suspended while rendering, but no fallback UI was specified Add a suspense, comp uh, fallback, etc. Um, component higher in the tree to provide loading indicator or placeholder to display. Now you see this error and then you look at your code and think, oh, well, that doesn't make sense because I do have a suspense and an error boundary inside of my code, uh, like higher in the component tree. So what gives? So these components that use boundaries to communicate between the uh, suspense boundary and the error boundary need to be isolated components, okay? So this here is going to bypass these boundaries because they're in the same component. It's going to communicate its state to the boundaries that are outside of it where it's rendered. So if we actually put these back... So we can leave them there, but they're not going to do anything. 
And if we put them back here, if I can get this all right, then it does all work again. But we know that these ones are being ignored. So no point in having them in there if they're being ignored, right? So why is this and what do you need to know? Well, it's actually part of the design of suspense and error boundaries. Um, hey, sorry, there was a glitchy, glitchy thing and the computer demons were having some fun and I don't know. Anyway, at the end of the day, what I wanted to share is, is that it's really important important that suspense and error boundaries be outside of the components that are suspending because if you put them inside they're not going to do anything um, but also by design it's nice to have these tools that we can mix match and move around to make sure that the experience that the user is getting is exactly what we want and tailored specifically to that page so that's it. We talked about use deferred value and we talked a little bit more about some of the gotchas and questions that you might have with use transition uh, with regards to data fetching with suspense. Um, I think I think that's it. And that's really it for uh, React Holiday. If you're interested in this and you haven't actually signed up and you want to get all of the emails that led to this point, go to react.holiday. Yes, that's a TLD, react.holiday. Um, and you know, check it out. You can email me at any point and I'd be happy to help you along your journey mastering React 18. That's it for me. And uh, yeah, so today is the last week or the last day before Christmas. Um, so I'm going to be taking off and just enjoying time with my family. So thank you for spending this month with me. Um, I think we're going to do another one in January on Svelte. So keep an eye out for that. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs down and tell me why you didn't like it. What do you want to learn about? Maybe you'll be happy next month when we learn about Svelte. Maybe you won't. <laughs> Who knows? But let me know. Um, and have an awesome holiday season. You're amazing. And I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.